So, make yourself comfortable. So I need to mute you, don't I? Let me just do that. Right, you're now also muted, of course. But as always, feel free to ask questions and just sit there thinking, you must be stupid because you can't understand or something like that. Okay, rubbing your hands together. Happy to have your face. As always, see this not purely as a physical movement. Over your head and neck, but one is one that actually gives you a sort of way in to being aware of your body. And shoulder and your arm. And the other side. Part of your chest. Belly. And finally, your legs. Right. So, your feet out, sit back in your chair, and just have a sense of arriving, not so much in the place where you are, because obviously you're at home, but a sense of arriving within that inner landscape of your body. Sitting back, feeling your weight drop down, in the rhythm of your breath. And try not to make assumptions. And try not to assume that however you felt during the last Tai Chi class or yesterday or whatever, it's going to be the same as today. That landscape is changeable like all landscapes. And there's a value to just being with what is happening there to begin with. It's not the end of the, the, the process, but it's a good beginning. Feeling where there might be any sort of stiffness, any tightness or blocks, for whatever reason. Some of them may be familiar, you know, and a, a kind of long-term nagging problem somewhere. Others might just be, you know, you might just have tightened up somewhere or something like that for no particular reason. And in the first instance, what we want to try and do is to let all, all of that tightness, all of that kind of sense of blocking drain away. Again, that's not the end of the process, but it's a good starting point because some of those areas will begin to release quite naturally without us having to interfere anymore. And then when you come to the upright, as always, there's a little bit of disruption as you move, but then the same process again. So one of the things, of course, we're very interested in in Tai Chi is this sense of the, the balance and the harmony of the internal movement, our breath, our circulation, blood, energy. And in a lot of cases, that is just something that naturally asserts itself as we begin to quieten and to settle, as we begin to move gently. The advantage of that is that it actually removes, if you like, a lot of what we think is going to obstruct us. It can take a few minutes, might take a few exercises for it to happen, but a lot of these things dissolve away. I quite like this image of something dissolving. I think it's quite a useful image. And then 
starting to move gently, turning your head. So the movement itself, and that's all the kind of movement, the larger movements, the smaller movements, the blood and the energy, will behave somewhat like water. And when, when water runs down a slope or even gathers in a puddle, it would do the same thing. It would dissolve and erode the, the space that it's in. It just need to be a little bit patient. We sometimes have an urge to push too hard, I think, when we're um, trying to get over some kind of straining or some kind of tension. And then shoulders, very accurate shoulders, chest, upper back. And then going forwards. Hands down to your sides, winding around. So as we start to move different parts of the body, again, we may notice the stiffness, a bit of tightness. We may also notice that gradually releasing. When it doesn't, then we, we, we can do various things. Go back the other way. One thing we can do is make the effect of the movement a little bit stronger by using different images. The one I've given you, water is a very common one. Water will penetrate a wall or cliff, find little cracks and gradually again dissolve them away, wear down rocks sitting in the bed of a river. And the soothing quality Rest your hands down. Be careful that you don't get too, uh, how can I put it, too sort of ambitious with that kind of idea. If areas are painful, again, that soothing quality of the flow may help to just ease that pain. It can help to ease the nerves, it can help to take away the reason for the pain in some cases. Remember that pain is there for a reason. So go very carefully with those areas. And obviously, if the pain persists, you, know, you may not be able to actually reduce it or get rid of it completely with Tai Chi. If it persists, then you know, it, it might be appropriate to, if you haven't done already, to see a doctor or something like that. You might want to just analyze the movement a little bit, a much more incisive quality. You know, are your shoulders in the right place? Are you moving in the right place? Are you doing the exercise correctly? And again, feel free to ask questions about that. Turn slightly. Above all else, don't just ignore the pain. So going back to that image of the 
the rock in the riverbed, the water doesn't just pretend it's not there, but it does flow around it. So we find pathways sometimes around those painful areas. As I've said, that can be very helpful. And then in the other direction. And then circling. Change direction. <clears throat> Come back to the central position, take one step forward, push the foot in gently. So don't just sort of touch the ground, but put your foot on the ground and press in. We plant the foot. It's a more definite, deliberate act than simply just sticking your foot out. Change sides. Notice how your body just shift across a little bit to release that foot. And notice how you're using the static leg. A little, bit, a little push down as you go to lift the foot can really help to move the leg and take away some of the tendency to stiffen up in back and shoulders. Now, alternating from side to side. Hands to your sides, turn your palms forwards, bird folds its wings. You will also find, as you sort of experience in these exercises grows, and you, hopefully you found already, because you're all quite experienced in this, that you'll be able to identify those exercises which are particularly helpful. Some of these movements are catalogued, you know, this exercise for that condition and so on and so forth. But we're not necessarily restricted to that because remember, your intent is important. So it's not only the physical response that your body has to a particular exercise, but also how your mind engages with that exercise. So this one I think is good. If you feel a bit sort of tight across your chest, we're not stretching the chest out or anything, but there is this very gentle opening and closing and on in your upper back as well. So if you've had one of those mornings where you feel as though you want to keep coughing or something like that, the damp or something, this can help to just clear that very gently with these very subtle movements. Of course, that's true for a lot of the exercises that we get that open and closing, but this is an exercise where we're able to focus on that a little bit, I think. I'm changing now to fisherman cast net.
and then throw it in the bowl. If you're finding that your shoulders get a bit tight doing this one, shift your attention away from the idea that you're lifting your arms. But rather imagine the ball between your arms and your chest, and then sit back and pull on your arms. And as they come over, let your elbows drop down. See, you know, you'll get a smaller movement doing that. And see if that helps you identify which parts of your body are actually doing the work here, where, you, where the, the energy comes from to move your arms. You may also find that you're less likely to sort of come up. So you, you're more able to keep your root if you take that approach. And then drawing apart. And then pushing a wave. And you get the feeling just before you move forward that your hips, buttocks are pushing down into the chair. So that starts the forward movement like a wave. So maybe the wave is not so much something we're pushing against, but it's something that is doing the pushing. One more. And into a hollow fist. And we don't grip your fingers tight. Tighten your wrist. Try and feel that spiraling movement from the shoulder down into your, your hands. And then back to pigeon spreads its wings. Sequence of three that will help you to build up that internal awareness and to draw your attention to these subtle changes within the body. 
become very aware of these things, not only the changes involved in these particular exercises, but others as well. But once you start to notice something about a particular piece of music, you sometimes notice it in other bits of music and other things about the same piece of music and so on and so forth. That downward push through hips and buttocks has a slight bit in the pushing backwards as well. Do one more round of this. And turn your hands all the way out. And your hands palm down, polishing the table, turning in your hips again, that downward and backward push on the rear of your body. Counterbalancing the extension with your arms, <laughs> not just counterbalancing, but actually, in a sense, enabling it. Actually pushing your hands forwards, pushing your shoulders forward. The movement in the upper body, particularly your arms and your hands, is very smooth as a result because you're not having to do that much. And especially with, you know, at this point, it's all very simple exercises. Some we know get more intricate. And we quite deliberately leave those ones to a little bit later. We want to be able to really feel that quality of movement in the arm. So when we do start to create slightly more complex patterns, we, we, we are able to maintain that feeling a little bit. One more time. Turn your hands. One more time. And the water goose. But in this way, when we, when, when we look inside in this way, we start to just become more aware of the dynamics of that 
internal relationships, inter internal landscape. We develop this very quiet quality. We really deepen our awareness of the individual movements, begin to find sometimes that they gradually change with that awareness changing and growing. One more time. Part in the crowd. A dragon plucks the stars from the sky. One more on each side. And then and both hands around and then So as you do this, just be aware of what's happening in the shoulders, through to your elbows, your wrists. Last week I was saying about the, the, the space in the joints. Make sure that you're getting as much as you can, this sense of the, the movement starting with that slight suggestion of a downward and backward movement hips, lower back as well, buttocks. You feel the push and then you feel the wave building. Try not to, to strain, particularly in your shoulders as you lift up. Another thing you can do if that doesn't work for you is that as you push out, you imagine somebody leaning down on your shoulder. What we would often do is we would start by lifting our shoulders up. If somebody's leaning on your shoulders, you can't do that. So 
if you use that image, then your body will begin to find <coughs> different pathways through which to make the movement happen. And then if you're comfortable with this, the next time, add in the turn. Don't turn too far. One more round. So again, extend one foot. Knee bent, just the heel on the ground, scooping the sea and looking at the sky. and grasping the tiger's ears. And then change in Put in and 
cylinder beams going around in one direction and back. And switching sides. And just let the two circles overlap a little bit. Somebody asked me the other day why it was called this. Um, I was introduced to it as a, an old Shaolin exercise coming from the Shaolin monasteries, the Shaolin monks. Um, and they reputedly used to sort of like when, you know, when they did the cooking, they, they would have these big cauldrons with beans in or whatever they were eating in, in them. And whoever was on cooking duty would have to stir the pot, as it were. It's got that kind of image. And there are a lot of images like that. And there was a very lovely, quite early martial arts movie made in Hong Kong called Shaolin Temple. The story, the, the myth really of the Shaolin Temple. And in, in the early stages, they, 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 they were showing people doing a lot of household chores, washing, cooking, sweeping up and so on and so forth, all moaning about it. And then when the temple got attacked and they had to defend themselves, they were able to use the skills that they developed in their domestic activities to defend themselves. So, so I, I don't know if it's still possible to access that movie. It's quite a fun movie. Stirring the bits. So now that sense of a, a push, a downward, backward movement changes from side to side. I push again through hip, lower back, and the buttocks on that side. Back. And then on this side. So it encourages that a little bit of a, a change around the pelvis, quite subtle changes, subtle movements. Okay, and then rest. Rubbing your hands together. Tapping over your face. Over your head and neck. Shoulder and your arm. Side. Upper part of your chest. Belly. And your legs. And then just So swaying in the river, these again very subtle movements, hips and pelvis. It's not only the muscles and tendons and ligaments and so on. They get trained. It also has an effect on the nervous system. A lot of these movements are quite small, fine, delicate motor movements. And the nervous system has different types of nerve impulses according to whether you're making big movements or small movements. And as always, there's a, a use it or lose it element here that if you don't make enough small movements, then 
you lose the ability to make them because your body thinks you don't need to do them anymore and just concentrates on the bigger movements. But if you carry on doing the smaller movements, then there's more chance that you'll be able to continue to do that. We can also combine this exercise with that rotation. And then sinking down and pushing up. Now change into the wild goose. and part of the payouts. Bonk of boards and transferring your weight. Always remember that possibility of just settling. Also, see if you can remember when we did the stepping in in the chair, I talked about that gentle little push down. It's quite difficult to do. It took me quite a while to really sort of get a feel for it. It reminds me a little bit. Um, for instance, so, uh, walking in the sea. So when we take the step in, you know, if you imagine walking in the sea, if, you, if, you're, if you're walking in the water, you're going for a little paddle or something like that, you don't just do that through the sea because the waves might push, push you over. You actually place the foot each time and you push down. Or if you're walking on soft sand, you sort of 
put your foot on the sand and then you, you look for the firma base underneath. And we can do that even without doing the stepping. So when I'm in the back foot, you know, before I want to go forward, I gently exert a little bit of pressure down and then move the weight and not while it's going, going back. It's difficult to explain exactly how it happens, but it does happen eventually. So use the images to help you with that. And after a while, you can find you almost get pulled in a little bit. It actually helps with the movement. And it certainly helps with that contact with the ground. And then raising your toes and your heel. So put the toes down, press gently, go forward, raise the heel, put the heel down, push in. And step in. Another image I use for the stepping is that it's like walking on thin ice. So two things about that. One is you don't want to commit your weight. So you keep your weight back, you don't just fall. And then you test the ice before you move your weight in. So doing that, ch change over now. Doing that just gradually makes you a little bit more aware of the contact between your ground beneath you and the soles of your feet. Something that, we're, that we often lose touch with, I think. We spend a lot of time walking on very even ground, usually in shoes or something like that. And it's also very difficult to maintain that awareness of your feet. Raising your toes and your heel. Stepping in. Taking a few steps forwards or backwards, whichever direction is best for you. Remember, these are slightly shorter than normal steps, but not too short. I'm going to extend out a little bit. But obviously, if we take a longer stride, then we are going to sort of like not fall, but we're going to sort of lose that ability to really test the ground. But in time, you'll retain some of that sensitivity about the contact between the foot and the floor. Check out. So the length of the step is governed obviously by the length of your legs, but also partly by how much you sunk down. You see, if you think of this as a triangle, 
then if I shorten this arm with a triangle, the vertical arm, the foot naturally goes out. Now, obviously, I, I, could, I could do that, but at this point, it's going to be quite difficult to really shift my, shift my weight. So we, we have to find a balance. Don't make it too small. Keep the width of your step as hip width. And you notice my heel, my front heel, is, is in front of my rear toes. Don't do this because this is too short. You're more likely to overextend your knee. And you'll also lose that ability to reach out with, with, with the foot. And in some cases, in some exercises, you'll be asked to make a real kind of stride in, in, in that sense, which is a good thing to do. Um, so I'm, I'm not saying this is the only exercise we should do for, for, for walking, but uh, um, a, a moderate. So to start off with roughly square, the width of your hips and about the same length. Okay, so now foot folds its wings. And then fisherman cast in there. Change over. And then change. One more time. Shake Go back to your chairs. <clears throat> Another exercise which is quite useful, I could just find something to. If I, if I put this on the floor here, you can see the black square. And so I, I'm, I'm standing here, I've, I've, that, that, that's, that's, that's where my foot is. You can try something again. You can you can hold on to something. What I want to be able to do is as close as possible get my foot back to the same position. Don't look, but feel. And then when you put the foot down, just check that you're back there. And so on and so forth. And again, it's another, it's an exercise that can help just to build your awareness of what's happening in, in your, your feet. And we sometimes very much lose that awareness. Some, some conditions um, will 
will actually um, foster that. Uh, but it happens to everybody. Um, I find that one of the most common um, instructions in martial arts and things like that at all levels, right, from beginner through to sort of black belt and so on and so forth, is get your feet right. Everybody loses that. Um, perhaps because they're a long way from the brain, I don't know. <laughs> Um, but it's very easy to lose track of what's happening in your feet. And if you, if you watch sports like cricket or something like that, the commentators are always talking about the feet, where the batter's feet are, where the bowler's feet are, and, um, um, and so on and so forth. Because it's very hard to, to, to get it that precise. So don't think that you're failing if you miss, but just try and kind of get used to planting the foot, as we say, rather than just taking random steps. That's a, another little exercise you can you, you, you can try for yourself. You could do it seated as well, of course. You, know, you could just do the same thing there and close your eyes, open them, check, sit back, close your eyes again, check. So you, you it just helps to increase the, the, that awareness. And again, it will have an effect on the nervous system and so on and so forth. So coming back to sitting, let your hands drop down. Aware again of that little bit of weight in your feet and embrace tiger, return to mountain. And Lovely. Thank you very much, everybody. So try that little exercise with, with, with the feet. It can be quite frustrating, of course, at times, um, because you, you, know, 